Now, if you're curious about what Elementor 3.3 offers in the way of new features, let's check them out together in today's First Look video. So first up, we have the eyedropper tool that lets us easily sample any color on our web page inside the Elemental Editor. So let's take a look at using this predefined layout that I've already loaded in, and we'll use this as the basis for selecting some colors. So let's say we just want to edit the color of a specific widget. Let's just choose this button. And once we do that, we're going to hop over to the style section. We're going to choose the background color. We'll click and we'll use the eyedropper, which is the new feature we have. We're going to click on that and we can now select anything on the page. So you can see if we come over this image and we click, what this will do is it'll pull in the five strongest colors that it sees inside the image, if available. Obviously, if you were dealing with something that's just like a single monotone color, you'd only see the one color and so on. But this then allows us to easily go ahead and you can see it gives us a real time preview of exactly what this would look like on the widget that we've got selected as we go ahead and make those sort of changes. It also gives us the hexadecimal value when we roll over. So these are really cool little features. One thing I would love to see though, let's just come back out of this, come back and select this to choose the eyedropper again. What I would love to see is when you mouse over the different colors inside here, you get a sort of a magnified version of what it is you're going to select. Because if you kind of go in for something that's quite small in an image, you want to make sure you're actually over the right thing. It would just be awesome to be able to have this sort of expanded preview of the color, like a pixel level sort of option that allows us to see this. There are various different sort of uh, design tools that allow us to do that. This would be really cool if we could see something like that. But first things first, all credit, this is a really cool little feature. So I really like how easy it is to simply come in, select, and then go ahead and choose a different color. Once you do that, you can see that's automatically selected, the color is changed, and then if we wanna add it to our new global colors, we can do exactly that. Now where this becomes more useful and more powerful is when you go ahead and you go into your site settings and you set up your global values for your global colors and things. And again, we can use it directly inside here. So let's go ahead and say we want to add a new color. We'll click on the color chip, choose the color sampler option, and we'll hop over. So we want to pick up this blue, for example. We can click on it. We can choose the blue that we want from the colors that are selected. In this example, you can see it's only two because we're dealing with this gradient and it's giving us the starting and the ending point. So again, it would be nice if we could have a few more colors inside there that would work across that gradient side of things. But either way, it's still a great starting point. We can then select that. That's now added into our colors and we can then go ahead and name that and we could just call this whatever we wanted. That's now been added into our global colors. Now, there are lots of use cases on where I think this could be really, really useful, especially if you're working inside a design and you want to pull those colors in, you haven't settled upon colors. But if you're using something like a design system supplied by a client or something you've built yourself, it's nice that you could then simply just go and select the color chips you've set up for the colors for your site inside the site style kit, and then you have all those things applied very quickly and easily. Next up, we have style kits, the ability to now easily import and export any of our own designs or import any number of third party designs from the likes of Theme Forest or Invato Elements. So let's pop over into the template section and into our kit library. And this is now going to give us a preview of all the different kits that we have available. Some of these are pro, some of these are available in the free version of Elemental. And we can organize these based upon the left hand side. We've got different tags to allow to group things together. We can add to favorites, all the things you probably have already seen in the previous iterations of working with this kind of preview section. But what we have now is a set of different kinds of kits. Some of these are ones we've already seen, for example, the digital marketing agency. I've already got one of those pages loaded in, nature and wildlife, real estate, and so on. Some of these are new. Some of these are ones we've already had for quite a while. If we click to view the demo, you can see this then will show us a demonstration of what this looks like and we can switch it between the various different devices to see how it looks on mobiles and tablets. So pretty cool. We've got those options inside there. I like that. You can then get an overview of this, which will show you all of the different pages that are part of this particular style kit. As you can see, this one has quite a few different pages as well as templates for the header, the footer, archive, single post, and so on, and some pop-ups and things. So really nice, clean way of being able to see exactly what's included. And again, we can come into the what's inside. This will tell us pretty much what we see on screen, but this will just give us the information. So if you have a lot of different templates, you can easily see what's actually included from there. Now, if you want to preview any of these pages to see what they look like, you can view the demo and it'll show you what it looks like. And if you want to test it across the different devices, your tablets, your mobiles, and so on, you can see, we can check to make sure that this style kit looks exactly how we want it. 
Now, there's one thing that I do find a little counterintuitive when it comes to this particular browser. We can look at these different style kits is the way in which you interact with it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, back to me would make sense that this would take you back to that list of the different pages and the templates and so on. However, what it does, it takes you back to the entire kit library, which is a little bit frustrating because, like I say, that's what I would think. So we click on view demo. I've got to go back up, click on overview to view all of this. Then I open up a different demo page. Now to go back, I've got to go back to overview. And that kind of feels just a little bit counterintuitive. So to me, back would make sense that it would take you back in your history as opposed to going back through the options at the top right hand corner. Maybe it's just me, but it's just something I wanted to note. Also, when it comes to the site parts and the pop ups and so on, you can't get a preview of these because they are basically template files. So you just get a, a little preview you can see on screen here. And that's pretty much all you're going to see. Now, once you've found the actual design you want to use, the style kit you want to use, it is as easy then as just clicking the apply kit. And this will then go ahead and apply that for us. Now you can see this then takes us through to a really simple wizard that allows us to choose what exactly do we want to import from this particular style kit. And you can choose currently between the templates, the content and all of the site settings. Now for most use cases, unless you're just testing something out, it's more than likely you're going to put in the templates and the site settings. However, you can pull the content in if you want a quick start and then just edit the actual layout. But the site settings is probably where it makes most use because this pulls in the global colors, fonts, style settings, and everything to do with the site. So you have the ability to very easily just import the entire starter site, the style kit, the styles, the content, the templates, everything. And you have a site you can pretty much start working with immediately. So for this example, let's just say we want to import all of that. We'll just say next. And now you can see your kind of like some information saying that, well, you currently have some information inside your design. You've got a header and a footer, for example. Do you want to import that or do you want to just keep on using the existing ones you have? Now, in this example, I've just basically pulled in exactly the same setup. So I could, if I wanted to disable that, you can see that tells me now this is going to use my default header. And if I want to, I can click and I can open up a new tab and see exactly what that header looks like. And if I want to make changes to it, I can do that from inside here. So it's nice and easy to work with. We'll just put that back on. We'll say we want to pull everything in. We'll hit next on there. And this is now going to go ahead, download all the resources we need, set everything up on our site, apply all those different global styles, the templates, all those kinds of things. And then we have the site ready to start making it our own. So after a minute or two, depending upon your internet connection speed, it gives you then an overview of what actually happened. You can see it tells us this is now live and all the templates, the settings and the content that have actually been pulled in. If you want to learn more about style kits, you can just click on the little help icon and that'll take you through. Let's go back to our dashboard and get rid of the nag message at the top. So now if we take a look in our theme builder, we should find there's all of our different templates that have been pulled in the header, the footer, the archive, single post and so on. And if we pop into our pages inside there, you can see there's all our pages, the about clients, all those kinds of things. And you'll also notice that like, for example, the eyedropper test, that was the test page that I created just to demonstrate how the eyedropper worked. It hasn't overridden and removed those. It's just added onto what's already part of your site. So it is worth knowing that this isn't going to wipe out everything. Obviously the styles and templates that you may have potentially would get wiped out, but any content you've kind of created will stay inside here. If we hop into posts and take a look inside there, there's also a load of pre-built posts and you can see they are all done through Elementor. So everything is pulled in. So let's just go and take a look now at actual site itself. And we can see that everything has been pulled in. Our navigation is in place. Everything is styled at the way we would need it to be. All the content is inside here. If we come back over to, for example, the about section, it'll take us through to the about page. Again, all the design aspect, all the different elements have been pulled in. And finally, if we go to news, you can see this is kind of our blog page and there's all our blog items that we just saw in the post section and click and take a look. So we now have the entire site content and everything being pulled in, ready for us to start making this our own design. Okay. So take a look at setting up the import export option. So if you want to import these manually or export them to use on another site, this is done in a slightly different way to what we've seen with the whole template setup. What we've got is if we come into Elementor, we've got the tools option and we have a tab called import export kit. We can click and you can see we can import or we can export directly from here. So let's take a look at the import option first of all. So if we open that up, this allows us to import a file. So we can simply drag and drop the zip file. So if we created one or we bought one from somewhere like the Envato marketplace, then we could grab those, drop the zip file in there, upload it and do basically the same kind of thing. We'll come back to that in a moment. 
let's hop back out of this and let's take a look at the export option. So we'll say we want to start our export. So what exactly do we want to export and what information do we want to include? So this is kind of the reverse of what we saw where we just loaded or imported that entire style kit design that we just used. This allows it to do the reverse. So we can now choose what we want to export. If we hop down to the kit information, we can give this a name. So we'll just call this WP Tuts Test Kit and just drop in a description. Okay, so once we've done that and we've chosen everything that we want, we can now go ahead and start the export process. Now, one of those things that would be useful in this case, and again, this is one of those things that I've only really just started taking a look at this, so it might not be relevant, but it would be nice if you could go ahead and choose exactly what templates, what content, or what site settings, so a little bit more granular control. Again, one of those things that hopefully as this starts to mature, we'll start to see some of these extra features being brought in. But it would be nice to sort of say you only wanted the global fonts and the global colors, but other things you might not want to actually export. So a little bit more granular control would be awesome. Let's click on the export option. And this is kind of going to go ahead now and tell us exactly what it's doing. So it tells us these are all the things that have been exported from the templates, site settings, and the content. And then we've got a zip underneath. So now if we come back out of this, we click X on there. We can come to import, so let's say we'll start our import. There's our zip, so we'll drag and drop that into there. That's now gonna go ahead, upload all those files, all the random information, and again, we now get what we saw the first time when we imported from the sort of previewer, tells us exactly what options we can import, and now we can go ahead, click on next, and you can see now, because we've got various different templates already in place, it's gonna ask us, do we want to import the new one and use that or do we want to use the existing one so for this example we'll just say we'll leave them as they are we'll say next and then this is going to take us through the process of setting everything up okay and there we go that's now done the import process you can see again like we saw in the import the previous time this gives us all the information and what it's done so we're back to the dashboard and let's go and take a look so if we go into the template section and into our theme builder we'll find we have a lot more files. So what this isn't doing is it isn't removing the old ones. Now, again, this is one of those things that I think if you are playing around trying out various different style kits to see what you think is a good looking style kit to work from, it could be useful to have the option to wipe out what's already there from the template structure or something, as opposed to do you want to keep the original and use that in place of the one that's part of the style kit? So that will be quite useful. Like when you do, when you use one of the starter sites from like Astra, for example, or Bloxy, when you import the starter site, one of the things it kind of asks is, do you want to replace, re completely remove the existing site, as it were, and replace it with these kinds of things? So I'd like to see that as an option moving forward so we don't end up with potentially tons and tons and tons of redundant files and content and things like that. So that would be just something cool, I think, that could be added to this to make it just a little bit more user-friendly moving forward. Now on top of all the things we've already covered, we also have a range of speed increases based upon CSS and the various widgets you load into your designs. Now I've not had the time to test this out, but any improvements to the loading and speed of our elemental based websites is a welcome addition in my books. Now these updates are now part of the free version of Elementor. And while not game changing, they are very useful. I especially appreciate just how easy and useful the eyedropper tool is going to be in future design work. So all in all, this is a useful addition to the free version of Elemental. I'd still love to see the ability to have multiple style kits a reality. But for now, this gives us more control over managing our designs. So good work, Elemental. Now, as always, I'd love to get your thoughts on this latest update in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, well, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. But if you didn't get value from the video, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.